Emergency, emergency. Emergency to all units, national HQs. Stand by for a special announcement. The Daleks have discovered time travel. We have invaded Earth. We have changed the pattern of history. I want to know what you're doing here. He's the sworn enemy of the Daleks. He's the one man they're afraid of, don't you see? You are the Doctor. Now you are in our power. It's our only hope. Changing history is a very fanatical idea, you know. If we don't act quickly, maybe too late. The Dalek Empire will spread through all planets and all times. Run, Doctor! Run! Benson calling Unit HQ. Benson calling Unit HQ. We just can't hold them, sir. Hi everyone, Tardis Guy123 here, and today I'm going to be reviewing Day of the Daleks. So as you can see, this is a third Doctor story, and it's the return of the Daleks after five years, I believe, since their last appearance in The Evil of the Daleks. And that was meant to be the final end, because Terry Nation was taking them away from Doctor Who, trying to launch them in their own series in America. Unfortunately, that never, well, you could say fortunately, um, depending on how you feel about the Dalek spin-off and the Daleks not being in Doctor Who. I personally think that they kind of work better when the Doctor's there, but anyway, let's move on back to this story. Uh, they're basically taken away, nothing really happened with them, and then they were brought back into Doctor Who. And there is a bit more detail into the story about that, I believe. There's probably somewhere on the special features. Um, but anyway, let's talk about... Let's have a look at the cover first. And it's quite a nice cover there. You know, you got that iconic image of John Pertwee with the two Daleks, and it's edited a bit, so you've got an ogre on there, Joe, and another Dalek as well. Funny story, there were only three Daleks during the making of this, and unfortunately it really does show. And then you have the things from the special edition version of it, the towers from the special edition. So now look on the side. You have Dot Who, John Pertwee. Day of the Daleks and the BBC and the To Entertain logo. Then here on the back is um, Day of the Daleks by Louis Ma Lou Marx and Disc 1 is Day of the Daleks and those are the special features in that and then Disc 2 is um, the special edition of Day of the Daleks. I'll talk about that in a bit. But anyway, let's open this up. Booklet there, disc one there, disc two there, and take them out. Front of the booklet, special features once again, this one, disc two, and the chapter points on the back, and it is a four part story. So then, as I mentioned just a second ago, this does feature a special edition, so what is all that about? Basically, it's kind of like, it's been all updated basically, not entirely, um, it's still majority of the original footage, some bits have been edited out, um, new special effects have been added in such as the Daleks um, blasts and the Ogron blasts and whatnot. Um, new sound effects as well, new Dalek voices because the old ones they were a bit rubbish and you know some CGI buildings as I mentioned there and quite a bit of other stuff as well. Um, they are, they kind of like redid the final fight scene a bit, making it a bit more epic. And over, overall, it's just kind of like um, it's a different version, basically. I won't say a better version. There are some parts of it I prefer, and some parts of it I don't. The Dalek voices I really do prefer. I kind of wish we could have just got um, the normal version with the Dalek vo with the new Dalek voices. I think that'd be very nice because yeah, those old ones really weren't that good. Um, and you know, some other parts, such as the final battle, you know, that works. The other parts were poorly edited. The building CGI is very CGI, and I personally don't think they had to do that or should have done that. And they're probably one or two other bits that I don't feel were necessary. Another, um, I think the Dalek voices is the key change and best change there. Um, but anyway, and. Um, let's talk about the story itself. I'm going to talk about, focus on the original to be honest. Um, because, well, it's the original version. And Special Edition is basically, my thoughts are the same for the most part, except some visual things, such as 
I previously mentioned there. So anyway, diving straight straight in. You got John Pertwee, marvelous as the Doctor here, as always. You know, he's a bit of a wine connoisseur in this one. You know, he's got that showing that side to him, that very um, dandy side to him, and that's quite. Yeah, that's, that fits his character, you know, it's not kind of out of the blue like some of the Doctor's characteristics um, can be at times when they just randomly introduce a characteristic for the Doctor. Um, but here, this one works, and also Drew Grant in this, she does, um, she does quite a crucial part, I think, you know, she's very much stepped up as a companion in this story, and gets to go off on her own strand of the story. However, it is rather a weak strand, given that she's just kind of like feeding into what the control is telling her. However, she does have some strong moments, and those are very good. And then you have the plot itself, which is a very interesting plot. You know, rather, rather a basic plot when we look back on it in the idea. Um, not basic, it is quite a complex plot, but, you know, it's a basic idea that has been done quite a few times, but this time it's been done in Doctor Who. It's that time paradox being... And it, it's quite interesting here, I feel. It's nice to have the Daleks part of that time paradox. And it's quite clever. Um, it does mean that a lot of the exposition has to happen in part four, which is a bit of a flaw, this story. But, you know, you can get past that. And because there's nowhere else you could really put it. I guess you could have put it earlier. But it would have been a bit difficult and it would have involved a lot of shifting the structure around. So it has to go there to just kind of explain everything, and then you just lead into the final battle after that. Um, anyway, the Ogrons in this, their first appearance of their two on TV, or three I guess if you count, a cameo in Carnival of Monsters. But they're quite interesting, you've of course got the no complications line, which is, you know, it's hilarious. It's one of those silly things that we as Doctor Who fans just like to laugh about. It's nothing too much. I think it was actually edited out of the special edition. That's that's quite unfortunate. Um, yeah, another thing to hold against the special edition. I don't hate the special edition at all. Um, I just think that they're probably about equal, in my opinion. Because, as I said, one does some things better, one doesn't. Um, so, yeah. Um, anyway, then you have unit in this. They don't play too crucial a role, especially in the second half, but it's nice to kind of have a times travelling story which doesn't involve the TARDIS apart from the console in the first part you know, that's, that's quite an interesting idea and um, but as I was saying, UNIT, Brigadier, Benton and Yates don't get too much to do in the second half um, but in the first half they do get a fair bit to do with the mystery of what's going on and everything that's all quite good um, and there's that funny scene where Mike interrupts Benton about to get a about to get some food off of Joe and then Mike Yates takes the, Mike Yates takes the food. It's quite a funny little scene I feel. And then you have the whole seriousness of the world emergency. I feel that could have been built on a bit more. I don't you don't really get the feel in this that there is a world emergency going on that it could lead to World War um, 3, you very much get the feel of that in the future stories, the idea that, that is a pivotal moment, but in the current day you don't really get the feel that the political situation is um, as serious as it is, it's just, it's just not displayed there unfortunately. Um, I don't really hold it against the story too much, but I feel, you know, a little bit more could have been done, maybe in the actors acting, or maybe just throwing a couple of lines in, I don't know, just to show how serious it actually is there. And yeah, that's basically what I have to say on that matter. Um, the future world is portrayed not not overly bleak, I would say. I don't know, you don't really get too much of a looking because it's only four parts, but you know, overall, it is quite an interesting world they created with the gorilla resistance and the controller is actually quite a nice character as well um, the acting is a bit I wouldn't say off at times but a bit odd, unusual um, often looking into the camera and whatnot but he does give a good performance and acts quite well off Joe he seems to take a pause before each one of his lines which is nice, it kind of like shows that he's thinking about it when talking to Joe, thinking about how to explain this, how to keep the 
keep up the pretense that there isn't anything going on when really there is in the Daleks there and whatnot. That's quite good. I like I like that part of his performance. Um, so overall, what did I think of this story? I thought it was quite enjoyable. Yeah, it's nothing amazing, but it is just something enjoyable that you can sit down and watch. And um, I quite like it. I think it's a very good John Pertwee story, and I would give it an eight out of ten. And I think this. Um, DVD is definitely worth picking up because you know, you've got to have a look at that special edition and also for the story itself if you haven't seen it already I think it's very worthwhile DVD picking up and it's got quite a few good special features on it too so then thanks for watching everyone and I will see you all next time with the review of the Lords of the Red Planet the final Lost Stories review for a while at least so then I'll see you all then bye everyone